Example one is e to the negative x. If it were e to the x, it'd be boring. Okay, so first let's define u to be our exponent negative x. Well, that means that du is going to be negative dx, negative one dx. Okay, now what we're trying to do with u substitution is replace everything in this expression here. So this would make this integral e to the u, but we can't exactly replace the dx. So what we need to do is rearrange this. This means that negative du is dx. So we'll replace dx with negative du. We'll go ahead and factor up a negative outside of our integral. So e to the u, the integral of that is just e to the u plus c, based on our first rule. Now I'll go ahead and throw that negative factor in there again. Now because u is negative x, we'll replace this back in there, negative e to the negative x plus c. Now we can check this by taking the derivative of what we have right here. And if we take the derivative, we will get, based on the chain rule, a positive e to the negative x, which is what we started with. So that in fact does work. Remember, we can always take the derivative of our answers to see if that matches our integrand from above. All right, number two. The easy choice for u here is still negative 2x cubed. So the derivative of that du is negative 6x squared dx. Don't forget that. Now we're actually trying to replace an x squared, so we will rearrange this by dividing by negative 6 to be negative 1 sixth du equals x squared dx. What that means is when we replace this, we rewrite this integral, we are going to have negative 1 sixth negative one sixth du, so we'll have a du in here, and we are replacing e to the negative two x cubed with e to the u. All right, so that, the integral of that is negative one sixth e to the u plus c, and if we replace the u back, reverse our u substitution, negative one sixth e to the negative two x cubed plus c. And that's it. All right. We still have a fairly obvious choice for example three. We can replace the one plus e to the x, mostly because we can take the derivative of that very easily, and that is just e to the x. Derivative of a constant is zero. e to the x dx. All right, so du actually replaces both of these. So this is the integral of u, and it's the square root of u, du. Now I am going to rewrite this as u to the one half, because then I can use my power rule. All right, so that would be u to the three over two, divided by three over two, plus c. I'm going to rewrite this a couple of times. Okay, first, I'm going to write this as two-thirds u to the three over two. And then last, I'm going to replace my u. So this is two-thirds. u is one plus e to the x to the three over two plus c. We'll continue to use u substitution on number four. My u is again going to be what's inside this parenthesis. It's the inside function there. So that is going to be three e to the x minus two, which makes my du three e to the x. The derivative of the negative two is just zero. All right, now we need an e to the x on, out here, e to the x dx. So We'll move the factor of 3 and make that 1 third du equals e to the x dx. All right, so we can rewrite this as 1 third du 
and that will be u squared because the du includes the e to the x and the dx. So this would be u cubed over 3. Now we can't forget our factor of 1 third. Alright, so that would be u cubed over 9 plus c, which because of our u is 3e to the x minus 2 cubed. And I'll go ahead and write this as 1 ninth plus c. Number five, our choice for u, because e to the u is integrable very easily, okay, often we want to replace the exponent on it to make it just an e to the x or an e to the u or e to the t or something like that. So that's why we keep replacing, um, I've replaced several times with that. However, if you notice on number four, or for that matter, on number three, we already had e to the x. We didn't need to replace an exponent. So replacing the term in here, the the terms right there, making that a u made this easier because it turned it into something that is like a polynomial. We could use our power rule on. Whereas here we have an inside function, something that is being squared, so that becomes the easiest thing to do. Whereas here we used the exponent as u, the exponent as u. All right, so on a lot of these, if we can replace the exponent, that often makes things a little bit easier. So this one I'm going to use 2x cubed, and so that makes du, the derivative of that is 6x squared. Now if you notice here, I need a 3x squared, 3x squared dx. I have a 6x squared dx. So what I'll go ahead and do is divide by 2 to make this 1 half du, and that's 3x squared dx. That's what I wanted, so we'll go ahead and do that. This integral becomes 1 half du. du includes the 3x squared and the dx, so we just are left with e to the u. And the integral of this, the antiderivative, is e to the u, so 1 half e to the u plus c. And then once we replace u, that's 2x cubed plus c, that integral is complete. Alright, moving on. Number six, find the price demand equation for a particular brand of toothpaste at a supermarket chain when the demand is 50 tubes per week at 235 per tube. Given that the marginal price demand function, P prime of X, for X number of tubes per week is given as P prime of X equals negative 0 0.015 e to the negative 0 0.01x. If the supermarket chain sells 100 tooth per week, what price should it set? Okay, so the first thing we should do is identify the information we have. We have some information that actually goes together. These two right here, 50 tubes per week at 235 per tube. That would be the ordered pair, 50, 235. Right, where x is the number of tubes and p is the price. That's actually going to help us find the constant of integration, okay, the, the c at the end of this particular question. Now, we're actually being asked to find p of x. We want the equation for price and demand, that it's x and p of x, but that we're given p prime of x. So what we're going to have to do here is to find p of x, that is going to be the integral of p prime of x dx based on the fundamental theorem of calculus part one. Okay, We can replace this and so that would be the integral of negative 0 0.015 e to the 0.01x dx. Notice the variable of integration, I'm using dx there because my function is in terms of x. Right, now, the integral of that will be, mm, we're going to have to use, use, use u substitution. So u is, I'm going to go ahead and use negative 0.01x. So that du is negative 0.01 dx. If you notice, we have a number out here, negative 0.015, a constant there. Now, 
What we need to do though is we need to adjust this to make sure that we have this. So what we could do if we didn't know what number to do, we could divide by negative 0.01 and then multiply by negative 0 0.015. I do happen to know, however, that if I multiply both sides here by, I'll just go ahead and do that, by, what is it, 1.5, that will get me the constant that I want. Let me just double check that. 1.5 times 0 0.01, negative 0 0.01, that is negative 0 0.015, so that would be negative 0 0.015 dx is 1.5 du. So we'll go ahead and use that. That'll be 1.5 du, and I'm going to go ahead and factor that constant out of my integral. Alright, so 1.5 du, that takes care of the 0 0.015 and the dx. Now that would be e to the u, and so this is a very familiar integral at this point, hopefully. That means we get 1.5 e to the, I'm going to go ahead and substitute my u back in, negative 0.01 x, and that is plus c. So that is p of x. Now, we need to use this point we're given, 50 comma 2.35, to determine what C is. So, if my price is 235, okay, that is 1.5 e to the negative 0 0.01 times 50 plus C. All right. Well, if I calculate that first part, 1.5, and then plug that in there, that is going to be... 1.44, I believe is what I have here. Let me do that again just to make sure. e to the negative 0 0.01 times 50. Okay. Yep, so that would be 0 0.909795. And then we subtract that, 235 minus that answer. We get that C equals 1.44. All right, so that means that my equation for the price is, in fact, p of x equals 1.5 e to the negative 0.01 x plus 1.44. Now, what we're actually asked for here is if they sell 100 tubes per week, what price? We actually are trying to find price. So the price, if they do 100 tubes per week, 1.5 times e to the 0.01 times 100 plus 1.44. And so our price at 100 tubes is $1.99. And is that right? That doesn't seem right. I did this earlier, but I'll do it again. 0.01 times 100 plus $1.44, that is $1.99. Okay, that works. Which is what we were after. And of course, the point of a video is that you can go backwards and forwards and rewatch things. So hopefully you've paused this if, you're, if I was going too fast or anything. All right, number seven. Suppose the rate of growth of bacteria in a Petri dish is given by Q of T equals three to the T, where T is given in hours, and Q of T is given in thousands of bacteria per hour. If a culture starts with 10,000 bacteria, find a function Q of T that gives the number of bacteria at any time T. How many bacteria are in the dish after two hours? All right, so in the end, what we're actually trying to find is cap, cap Q of T equals something, and in particular, we really want to know the amount after two hours. That's what we're really after. All right, so cap Q of T is equal to the integral of lowercase Q prime of T, or just Q, actually, because, because Q of T is the rate of growth. So in effect, this is Q prime of T. That's what that is. 
So if we integrate that, that will give us the cap Q of T, which tells us the number of bacteria. All right, well, that means we are going to have the integral of 3 to the T dt. Now, based on our, our formula, I say our formula, the equation we had at the beginning was the integral of a to the x is a to the x divided by a natural log of a plus c. So the integral of this is 3t, 3 to the t, over natural log of 3 plus c. That is what q of t is. Now, to find C, we're given that it starts with 10,000 bacteria. That is a point. This right here is a point. Zero, 10,000. So we can plug this in. 10,000 equals 3 to the 0 over natural log 3 plus C. So if we solve that equation there for C, C is 9,999.09. And I went and rounded to two decimal places. All right. So this gives us the equation. Q of t equals 3 to the t over natural log of 3 plus 9,999.09. To actually find the answer to our question, we can plug 2 in. So that would be 3 squared over natural log 3 plus 9,999.09, which gives us that Q of t is approximately, because this is not going to be exact, over natural log 3 plus 9,999.09 is 10,000 and 7.28. So I'm going to go ahead and say it's approximately 10,007. That's how many there will be after two hours. All right, last one of these that we're going to have that explicitly uses exponentials. Evaluate the differential in the definite integral using substitution. So from 1 to 2 of e to the 1 over x divided by x squared. Now, I said previously we want to try to make the exponent either a single variable, right? A u, a t, an x, something like that. So even though this looks fairly complicated, it's really not. Okay, we can make u 1 over x, which would make an e to the u over there. Now, that means that du is negative 1 over x squared dx. Now, that hopefully looks a little familiar because we have it divided by x squared over here. So I'm going to go ahead and rewrite this okay, as 1 over x squared times e to the 1 over x. I mean, that's, that's what it is. So to get the 1 over x squared there, I need to move my negative signs. So that would be negative du, change, differ it by a constant, 1 over x squared dx. Now, when I go to replace this, it is going to be... The 1 over x squared dx is taken up by negative du, and it becomes e to the u. Now I'm going to go ahead and change my variable. Okay, So I started with x's. I'm going to convert these to u's. Upper limit is 2, lower is 1. Since it's 1 over x, my u becomes 1 half and 1. So I'm integrating from 1 to 1 half. Next thing I'm going to do is actually put these in order because we have some properties of integrals, and that is we can convert this to the integral from 1 half to 1, change it to positive from negative, and that is e to the u du, which makes this e to the u evaluated from 1 half to 1. So this will be e to the 1 minus e to the 1 half. Right, which this is going to be approximately 